Hey everyone. Hello, greetings on uh, this Friday, May the 5th. Checking in from Sedona with all of you as we explore the ongoing warrior goddess witchy challenge. So I've just settled into the space at Mago. It's so nice to be here. Um, someplace that I've been coming for, I think, eight years now to get ready for the gathering of the shamans tonight and a fire walk for 200 people tomorrow night. Super exciting. So some of you I know have been part of our Warrior Goddess Witchy Challenge, and I wanted to take some time just to say hello to everyone and check in with, all, with how you're doing. We're on day five of the challenge. It's a seven-day challenge. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can still join. Today we talked about divination and the power of using everything as a form of connecting to the divine. Hey, Roberta. And that that divination is not about knowing exactly what's going to happen in the future and something that somebody else does for you, though they can. For me, divination is about learning how to listen and learning how to listen on all the different levels. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Hetty. And that those levels are about really tuning into our senses, all five senses, smell, taste, touch, sight, and sound. And that when we tune into the senses, we can actually go beyond them to perceive things that are invisible, that are not tangible, but that those come in a place of feeling sense, a knowing in our body. Hey, Laura, happy Friday and or a sense that this is the direction that we're being guided. So the key to divination, or one of the things that I'm playing with today, is this idea that you don't need, although it's super fun to have tarot cards, to have runes, to have something external, but that you can use everything as a form of divination. So what we're going to do today is use Warrior Goddess Wisdom book, because I have it right here. Actually, let's do this. Let's do two forms of divination today. <laughs> Fun. So one is Warrior Goddess Wisdom book, and the other is this book I just started reading, Finding Beauty in a Broken World. So good. Such a great book. Um, so in a moment, I'm going to pull from two pages randomly and see what our message is today. So before we do that, maybe for those of you that are live, and if you're watching later, you can also tune in as well, is to, exactly, Laura, my mom uses the Bible. Anything will work. You can pull a book off the shelf. You can look outside and look at the clouds. You can look at the trees. You can look at tea leaves. All of it works. And the wonderful thing about this is that one, not everything is a sign. So sometimes people, sure, sometimes people will get into this place where they're like, everything is a sign. Every single thing has meaning. No, it doesn't. Not everything has meaning. Some things are just things. <laughs> so how do you know? How do you know if it's a message for you? How do you know if it's actually divination versus a red car going by or versus, you know, a bird flying on its path? Let's talk about that. So here are the two books that I'm going to be oracling from or divining from for fun. So Warrior Goddess Wisdom. So this is my book of daily inspiration. And the other book is one I just started reading, Terry Tempest Williams. Her book, Work, changed my life when I was in college. And this one is Finding Beauty in a Broken World. So we'll be using this one as well. Uh, videos on Facebook. As part of the Warrior Goddess Witchy Challenge, you have to sign up. So if you haven't signed up, that's where all the videos are. And let me go ahead and just share it here. Wildwitchywise.com. Boom. Because I'm not doing many of the videos. Or This is, I think, my first Facebook Live because I've been in Scotland. Witchy wise. Let me try that again. Wild witchy wise. So if you want to sign up for the challenge, 
you are so welcome to. We're on day five, but when you sign up, you still get all the back. Oops. <laughs> Check M. No, that should be dot com. <laughs> I'm going to try it again. Wildwitchywise.com. That's where you can sign up. And when you sign up, there we go. Boom. And that's in my profile. For those of you that are on Instagram, hi, Instagram people. And I'm doing broadcast on YouTube, on a bunch of the Facebook pages, as well as on Instagram. So when you sign up, you'll have access to all the back little lessons. What I'm doing for Warrior Goddess Witchy is seven videos or about 10 minutes each. We'll close uh, Sunday. Sunday's the last day with a, a really beautiful visualization that I'm creating. It's an audio visualization about getting info and insight from your future self. It's going to be good. So you can always check in um, and watch the videos later. It'll be up for a, a short amount of time. I think we're leaving it up for a week or two. So make sure if you have signed up, but you haven't watched all the videos to go watch the videos. If you haven't signed up, make sure you sign up and go watch the videos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello. So excited to be watching. I'm in Van Victoria, BC, Canada. I wanted to be at the Shamanism Retreat in Sedona this weekend, but I'm going to Sedona for the first time in October. Yay. I'm loving the witchy videos. Yay. Good to see you. Yeah. We are about to start gathering the shamans here. I go up to teach in a few hours, but I wanted to say hey to everyone on internet and just connect with you about warrior goddess witchy. And remind you, if you haven't signed up, to go ahead and sign up for it. I'll be doing one more webinar. Oh, and also, mm, so good. So the webinar that we did yesterday, which was called Warrior, what was it called? Healing into Wholeness. So part of the Warrior Goddess Witchy, Healing into Wholeness. Such a good webinar. So just sign yourself up for the Wild Witchy Wise Challenge just for that webinar and more, but that webinar was really sweet. Lots of great questions. We have one more webinar happening May 11th. So again, if you want to join, if you want to be on that webinar with me on May 11th or get the recording, please go join wildwitchywise.com. If you're already on my newsletter list, you should be getting the emails. If you haven't been getting the emails, check your spam or email my team, hello at warriorgoddess.com so that we can find out what's going on. All right, in a moment, we are going to dun, 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 do a little divination from this book, Warrior Goddess Wisdom, and from this book, I just picked two books at random, Terry Tempest Williams. <laughs> Aw, Carol, I love it. You were my dream last night. Yay. Aw, thanks, Laura. Laurie, I love that. Hetty, my name is Heather Ash, first name. Welcome to being here. Good, Lucinda. Yeah, and thank you to all of you for Warrior Goddess Witchy that have been sharing every day and tagging yourself. I go and watch everything. I've been commenting on everything because there's so many of them, but I have been looking at everyone's posts and just loving on each of you. And as part of the Warrior Goddess Witchy Challenge, we're doing a bonus drawing. And so if you... Do the bonus, you got to join to find out what the bonus is. But if you do the, the bonus every day for seven days, then I will pick a winner. And that winner is going to win a nine month program with me, which is called Journey of the Nine Moons. So Journey of the Nine Moons starts May 17th. We're super, super excited about it. And part of what we're doing with the Warrior Goddess Witchy Challenge and all of this is inviting people into our next Journey of the Nine Moons, which is a closed circle where you get to work really intimate with Lee, with me, with Serena, and with a small group of people that go through a journey together. So keep an eye on your email for that, for all the information about that. All right, so let's play with how divination works. Oh, hi, Hedy. I'm glad you're Kurdistan. Very beautiful. It is super cool. So one of the things about divination is that, like I said before, not everything is a sign. So please don't start living your lives as if everything is a sign telling you to do something because you're going to probably get yourself confused. So I'll tell you in a second, Laura. Great. So what you, 
want to do is really learn to listen to what is a message versus what is life happening. And it's a feeling sense in the body. So how I think about it is that we're always in communication with the divine. There's always conversation happening, always, always, always. And what we're learning to do is to clear out enough of the noise that often happens in our being so that we can become clear channels, we can become quiet internally so that we can hear the messages that are for us and let go of what's not for us. Because there's a lot also happening that's not for us. That's not for us to do. That's not for us to pay attention to. Because just like we get so much stimulation constantly. And if you just think about sound, like there's all sorts of sounds that are always happening around us that we tune out. And that's important for us to tune it different things out so we can hear what's actually for us. So for example, right now there's a refrigerator that's making a sound. I was doing laundry early, that sound was happening. And if I tuned into all of those different sounds, it would get super overwhelming. But when I trust myself to, to realize, okay, I don't need to be listening to these particular flavors of things, that then gives my psyche and my being more capacity to take in information that's actually for me. Okay, so it is about learning what it feels like in your body or what the sensations are that are different when you have a message versus just things that are floating about, okay? So here's an example. If I am wanting to get clarity about a decision that I need to make, let's say it's a decision about moving to a different state and or a different country, and I really need information about that, what I wanna do is first come up with what's the question that I'm asking and that the question is something that I can then bring into my body and hold as an open question. So instead of like, I need the answer to this right away, what we want to play with is how do I craft a good question? And what's the feeling sense I'm going for? What are you going for? So part of divination and being in relationship and communication with the divine and listening is being clear in your body first, what's the question? What does the question feel like? What do you, what's your, and I, another way to put this is what's your heart's desire? Where are you needing information and guidance? Okay, so let's say that my question is about where should I move? What I wanna do next is where should I move? And then the next piece is to bring into that the feeling sense that I want when I move. Okay, so part of your question is giving information of what it is you're actually wanting. Okay, so let's say when I really feel into, I want to move and the feeling sense of moving is I want to have a community where I feel like I belong, where I, there's lots of connection to nature and that I let myself feel that connection to nature and where I can settle where I can feel grounded and settle. So I bring all of those feeling senses and that intent into the question of where's the best place for me to go. Here's what I'm holding. Here's what I want in my life. And then I bring that into my being and I hold it without striving to figure out the answer. And this is sometimes the hardest part because often we're trying to rush getting answers. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to get the right answer. And that's the other thing that can create a lot of stress is I have to figure out the right answer. And divination works best when we're relaxed, when we're open, when we're listening, not from a place of, I must figure this out right now, but from a place of I'm willing to be available for the insight and the information to come for guidance from the divine. So that place of getting quiet, getting clear with what our question is, and then opening our being for information, for support, for guidance. Okay. So if you wanna play with me today, 
go ahead and start thinking about what's a question that you have in your life right now. What's a question that you have about something in your life right now? And bring that into your body rather than just your head. So if, if it's something that you've been really struggling with, you definitely want to bring it into your body and let go of the, the trying to figure it out. There's definitely times to use your head to try and figure things out, for sure. But in case of divination, we're trusting that there's a larger force that is in communication with us and that can see a bigger picture than we can. That's really what divination is. It's acknowledging that we can connect with something that has a bigger vision and a bigger capacity to see than we can see. And that is definitely about connecting to the divine, that the divine has a longer range vision than we do. <laughs> we can see a bigger, pic bigger piece of the pic picture. All right, good. So Laura had asked, what do we need to do with the challenge? So for those of you that are part of the challenge, or if you're not part of the challenge, it's wildwitchywise.com. We're doing warrior goddess witchy. I love this. So um, not too long ago, a couple of months ago, we did Warrior Goddess Wild Challenge, which was really fun. And now we're doing Warrior Goddess Witchy. And then in the fall, I'm going to do a Warrior Goddess Wise Challenge. And these three qualities, wild, witchy, or willing, and wise are part of my next book that I'm working on. So as a, a author, I'm excited because I haven't written a book for three years. So so it's really fun to be working on this new book, which is called Wild Willing Wise. And we're using these archetypes, these three energies through the challenges to help us go deeper. So as part of the Warrior Goddess Witchy Challenge, there's been, we're on day five, we're talking about di uh, divination and listening today. But we've talked about cycles, we've talked about healing, we've talked about, hey, Darlene, um, what is witchy? And then the next two days, we'll be finishing up the challenge. So if you haven't joined us, please feel free, wildwitchywise.com. So that's all you have to do to join is just go to that page. You can sign yourself up. It's super easy. Uh, if you're part of the, my email list, just know that you're already part of the challenge. And so go do a search if you haven't gotten the emails or write our team, hello at warriorgoddess.com. If you want to be in the drawing for, to be part of, to win, to, to be in the drawing, let me figure out how to word this, to be in the drawing to possibly win a free Journey of the Nine Moons yumminess. So I have a program. It's the longest program that I've been teaching. I started teaching it 22 years ago and actually started teaching it before then, but it's been online and in that mode for the last 22 years, lots of tweaking and updating. It's an incredible program that is a nine month deep dive into healing. And I bring all the tools that I've learned from my teachers, Vicki Noble, Cardoin Falling Star, Don Miguel Ruiz. So it's a combination of European shamanic tradition as well as Toltec wisdom. And we talk about how to not carry forward the wounds and trauma and agreements of your ancestors, how to speak up and speak your truth, how to hold yourself steady, even through great change, uh, teach you a pro process called recapitulation, which is around gathering energy for the past so you're present in the moment. So a lot of folks, there's been over, we counted 2,000 um, people have gone through Journey of the Nine Moons. Yay! And it's a really phenomenal, phenomenal program. So to do the challenge, what you want to do if you want to get in the drawing to win a seat in Journey of the Nine Moons is there's bonuses at the end of every day for the challenge. And it's about doing the bonus. And you can do them in the, you know, do them all on one day. That's fine. Listen to all the videos on one day. Um, but just know we're going to be closing that next week. So you want to go and listen to everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And most important, make sure you tag Warrior Goddess Witchy. So you do hashtag Warrior Goddess Witchy because that's how we're tracking who's doing the challenge so we can pick. All right. How much does your nine month program cost? The program is $2,000 for the nine months. And we also 
offer payment plans. So you can pay upfront or you can pay in installments. There is a 20% discount right now for people that are part of Warrior Goddess Witchy that we're about to announce. So that means the program cost is $1,600 in full. And then you can pay monthly. So for some people, and we make it really work to make it as accessible as possible. So there's a four month payment plan, there's a nine month payment plan, and there's a 12 month payment plan, which gets the price down to about, I think it's about a hundred a month. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's such a great program. So let's do our divination. And Lori, I'm working on my challenge and find a recurring concern. Read my twin daughter, second born, the twins now 25. A dream I had when she was a baby and it bothers me to this day. It is what arose in my question phase. Okay, great. So hold that um, about the dream that you had about one of your twin daughters or the second born twin. So hold that. So whatever your question is hold it in your body so bring it from a thought into a feeling sense what's the question so like Lori, the question is might be give me more insight about that dream or should i release this dream does this dream have value to me now because maybe it doesn't maybe the dream doesn't have value anymore maybe it was about something and it's you don't need to carry it any longer so whatever your question is Get clear about the specifics of the question. What are you asking? And then drop into your body so that you feel the question, that you're holding the question. And as you're holding the question, and opening into your willingness to receive an answer. Opening into your willingness to receive an answer so that you're not listening from your head or trying to figure it out, that you're willing to receive guidance from something larger that has a bigger vision that you do. And then we're gonna play an experiment. So I'm gonna read from a couple of books that I pulled. Take this in information in. Don't let your head get involved. And this is something that's really important around divination is sometimes our minds want to come in and say, well, what does that mean? That doesn't make any sense. It's not going to make sense to your brain. It's going to make sense to your intuitive knowing self. That's different. Okay. So that place of letting yourself stay open and the answer may not come right now. If you stay open, it may, it'll come in the next couple of days. Okay, it may come through a dream, it may come through another book that you pick up, it may come from some something that I read here. Okay, so just be curious. Be open and curious. And again, the answer might not come right away, but it may come, it will come, I shouldn't say it may, it will come over the next few days as you stay open. All right, so hold your question in your mind. And let's see what Warrior Goddess inspiration has for us. I'm just going to flip to a page. All right, here we go. So I'm going to read a couple things, and then we're going to also pull from this book. So I said we're going to do kind of a duo thing today, which is fun. Oh, good. Perfect, Laura. Lori, sorry. So here's the the divination message for us today. Dedicate yourself to the good you deserve and desire for yourself. Give yourself peace of mind. You deserve to be happy. You deserve delight. Mark Victor Hansen. Okay, so I'm just gonna read this paragraph. Instead of trying to be good or waiting for someone to tell you that you are deserving, take charge. You are deserving you get to take up space. You get to enjoy your body, mind, and experiences. You are a child of the universe and you deserve peace and contentment. Okay, so just keep feeling and opening into that. 
<laughs> I love it, Darlene. That's great. Okay, let me find. Okay, give me a sec because I got to find the right feeling sense. Okay, here we go. All right, so again, the second one is from this new book, Finding Beauty in a Broken World. I'm just going to read one line. I have come to love this haunting regularity at five in the morning and seven at night. She's talking about the, the call to prayer from a mosque. I think of Mitchell, a Red Cross volunteer dressed in his pink bobo, his wisdom, his commitment and generosity. How he teaches me something every day, be it language, a new word or something inside his culture. Okay. So just again, settle into that feeling sense of learning something every day, of being in a different culture and being called to prayer. So these images, and this is how divination works, is that often there's an image and a feeling sense, again, it's not logical, a vision, a feeling sense, a picture, a feeling sense. So imagine that feeling sense of learning new things, of being in a new culture, of being called to prayer. And as you stay open to that and to the first piece that we read around you are deserving of delight and pleasure and ease, just let yourself feel what's the message for you. Keep softening. so that you can open to a feeling sense, a knowing, an image, a direction. Okay. Good, and then share anything that, that arose for you. So for those of you that are, are playing this game about listening to divination, go ahead and share anything that arose for you. And again, you may not get the answer right away. I invite you to stay open for the next couple of days to just see what bubbles up inside of your being as support as an answer. My question for myself was around a combination around writing and how to stay grounded as I travel. And one thing that really hooked my attention when I was reading is that place of being called to prayer and how do I set that up in my life? Feels like the message is create a way to be called to prayer, to be called to the divine that stays steady as I travel. Okay. And again, your answer doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. Yay. It just needs to feel, you just need to be something that you feel. Okay. So any messages anybody wants to share or any questions? Again, we are talking about the warrior goddess witchy challenge, which we're in the middle of. It's day five of the challenge, two more days to go. And part of the warrior goddess witchy challenge for today, day five is about divination really great videos for the challenge. If you haven't joined the challenge, you can join at wildwitchywise.com. We'll have the videos and all the teachings up for about another week. And I'm doing one more live video May 11th. And this is all as part of our invitation into our next Warrior Goddess Circle, which is called Journey of the Nine Moons. Mary, what's next for me? Travel more, Mexico, Dia de los Muertos. Yay, beautiful, beautiful, good. 
Any other share? Shares or questions? Then I'm going to go get ready for my weekend here in Sedona, teaching at Gathering of the Shamans. Um, and I'll share photos on social media. We're about to do tomorrow night. We're doing a fire walk for 200 people. Um, we have an amazing place that we do a fire walks here. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so Facebook user that just posted at 402, if you want to share your name, because it's not showing up. Thanks for sharing. My question is actually about where I should move. Being called to prayer aligns with my wanting to find a spiritual tribe and like-minded community. Beautiful. The I deserve part makes me think that my choice doesn't have to please anyone but me. Yay. Hi, Kim. Yay. I love it. Yeah. So keep settling in and then opening, settling in and opening. And this is the thing is that as we learn to listen, we start to follow in a way, the bread the breadcrumbs of the divine dropping information for us. And there's a particular resonance that you'll find as you travel, as you walk your path, is you'll start to feel the resonance of what's from the divine versus what's from your strategy or from your fear or from your just, I need to know or I need to have an answer or what's from somebody else. And that's part of the big work that we do in Journey of the Nine Moons is that we really help through the teachings, through the community, through the place that there's really unconditional support for your journey and finding out who you are is to sort out what's mine, like what's yours versus what's not yours and what's intuition versus what I call strategy, which is out of fear. The intuition has a, a very different feeling sense and there's a way that we can start tracking it. So start looking for where are those breadcrumbs that the divine is leaving just for you. Mm, beautiful, Christine. Coming out of my masculinity and trying to move into softness one step at a time. Yeah. Mm, good. Lori, so loving your program. Firewalking is such an amazing experience. I love that you are a guide in this. It flows from you so eloquently and eases into our consciousness so sweetly. Yay. Thank you. I love firewalking. <laughs> yeah. And we just got to do um, so nice to be doing firewalks again, you know, of course, through the pandemic and through we had a big wildfire up on my land last year. So there's been a lot of mischief around the fire. Um, and it's been really nice to do firewalks. I just did one in Scotland. Um, uh, feels like it was three days ago. I guess it was uh, six days ago. That was really beautiful to get to do a firewalk in Scotland and now to get to do one here in Sedona. Yeah. Ah, oh, good to see you, Darlene. All right, loves, thanks for joining me today. I'll do another live sometime next week as well. And remember, there's one more webinar as part of our Wild Warrior Goddess Witchy Challenge. Um, everybody is invited to it. And the webinar is called, oh, I keep forgetting the name of it. <laughs> That's so funny. It's got a great title that I keep forgetting. <laughs> but check it out. It's happening. Hey, Nova Scotia. Churro. Uh, it's happening on May 11th. I think it's at four o'clock Pacific time, something like that. So it's in the later afternoon. Everybody's invited. If you haven't joined the challenge, wildwitchywise.com. We'd love to have you be part of it and come on over to the webinar that's happening on May 11th. Um, and there'll be a couple of other things. I'll do some lives as well. And I'll also share some photos of all the things that are coming up. Hey, Tanya. Mwah. Perfect. All right, sweets. Take good care of yourself. Sending you love from Sedona. Talk to you soon.